Good afternoon. My name is Brian, and today I'm going to be refuting Reagan Harper's claim that you should avoid using plastic straws. Her three, sec her three secondary claims are that plastic straws are harmful to our planet, that giving up plastic straws is an easy way to cut down on waste, and that avoiding plastic straws can be beneficial to your health. To start off, the original claim the original claim makes it seem as a policy is being suggested rather than a claim of fact, which may be misleading when the audience is expecting a claim of fact. I am refuting the advocate's claim because most of the evidence is invalid and there is no documentation on the sources. The first claim is that plastic straws are harmful for our planet. It is stated that we use 500 million straws a day, but no source or documentation is given on where that information came from. It is also stated that plastic straws make up 2,000 tons of plastic waste in our ocean. According to PlasticPollution.org, there are over 8 million tons of plastic waste in our ocean. That being said, plastic straws only make up 8,000 of the 8 million tons of plastic in our ocean. That's approximately 0.025%. Plastic straws make up so little of our ocean's plastic, plastic waste that it is not worth the effort to remove them from the greater portion of our society. The, secondary, the second secondary claim is that giving up plastic straws is an easy way to cut down the waste in our oceans. However, I would argue that getting rid of them is not easy, but rather difficult. According to National Geographic, we have been using plastic straws since the late 1890s. Getting rid of them will not be easy, as we've been using them for over the last 100 years. Additionally, the advocate states that several restaurants, such as McDonald's, Starbucks, and others, are taking steps to cut down plastic straw usage. However, like before, a source is not stated. And these are only a few restaurants of the ones that make up the, the um, the restaurants that use plastic straws. It's just to set a couple out of the many. The advocate also states that giving up plastic straws will make you feel better because you're contributing to a greater cause and helping the planet. This is not factual data, but rather an emotional appeal. Additionally, she doesn't mention how it's, it's hard to get businesses to stop using plastic straws. You can't force people to stop using plastic straws or force businesses to stop offering them. For many businesses, it's cheaper to use plastic, so convincing them to go green might not be easy. The third secondary claim suggests that avoiding straws can benefit your health. This claim is introduced by saying, now that you feel better about the planet, this is simply just using pathos as you would in a value argument. During this speech, it is stated several times that studies show this and studies show that. However, no description of who did the study it is given or where it came from. There is no ethos with this evidence being presented. It is also stated that studies show that straws, that straws increase your chance of cavities. However, WebMD states that plastic straws decrease the amount of cavities rather than increase them. Straws provide a direct route from your lips to the throat, therefore the sugary fluids don't touch your teeth. The advocate also stated that straws project sugary beverages to your teeth, which obviously is false because that WebMD says otherwise. In addition, people with handicaps will also have to always have access to plastic straws. According to NPR.org, many people with, handic people with handicaps only make up a small percentage of those opposed to plastic straws because to most people it's just simply a preference that they want to use a straw. In conclusion, the three secondary claims all lack evidence to prove its claim along with a citation for the information being provided in the speech. Because of this, I argue the advocate failed to provide the means to prove the claim asserted.
All right, structurally, everything's easy to follow. On the first point, uh, you do press a little bit on the research that the advocate is using, suggesting that there isn't any citation for the 500 million statistic. I do like the way that you analyze the total number of tonnage of plastic straws as opposed to the 8 million tons of plastic waste in the ocean. And then you calculate out how uh, what a small percentage it really represents, uh, and you say it's not particularly significant. I think that kind of connects a little bit with the second argument where they're talking about how easy it is. This is one of those things that is sometimes referred to as virtue signaling. In other words, we can do something that's going to make ourselves feel better, but it doesn't really have any practical effect on what's going on other than making us feel better about ourselves and in some way superior as a consequence. I think that that's the way to kind of present this argument. And you get into that a little bit in that second point. On the second point, uh, you do start off by suggesting that it would be difficult to do this because we've been using straws like this for a long time. Uh, there's a suggestion that restaurants would have difficulty changing, although there's no information on what the cost issues would be. I think that you kind of come along to this conclusion that this is really, you know, like I said, this sort of virtue signaling thing that's going on. You'll feel better about yourself, which is really an appeal to pathos, not logos. Is this going to save uh, the planet? Is it going to reduce the damage to the uh, ocean? Is it going to alter the uh, course of uh, human history in some way? I'm not sure it is, except that I'm going to feel better because I'm doing something that looks good. Uh, that's basically what it comes down to, and I think that you do a pretty good job of diminishing this as a justification for taking an action. On the, the third point, it was a little bit confusing because, first of all, you do suggest uh, general criticism about studies being referred to where, where there's no description of what those studies are, which I appreciate. Uh, you, you do also then suggest that there's a pathos issue that's going on here. Uh, the, I thought your response to the cavity issue was pretty good. You have a piece of evidence that directly suggests that it's likely to decrease the uh, number of cavities that you're doing this. The advocate's evidence uh, you know, I don't remember, I think you suggested that they didn't really have a source citation on that. So in essence, you're going with WebMD, which is probably a widely recognized uh, medical resource that people use versus an unsighted uh, piece of information uh, that the advocate presents. So contrast your argument. The last thing that you're talking about when you talk about people with handicaps, I'm not exactly sure how this argument helps your position, suggesting that it's a relatively small percentage of people that would be affected by this. Um, so how does that affect your position? I think it actually kind of works in a contradictory uh, direction. One of the things that you always want to think about is why am I making the argument that I'm making? What impact is it going to have? I don't think this helps you one way or the other. I'm not sure if it helps them. There might be a negative consequence to the handicap. Maybe that's the way you should present the argument that uh, people, uh, people who are handicapped or have some kind of disability often need the straws in order to be able to function effectively and putting an additional additional burden on them is harmful or has a negative consequence in some way. It's like, why, why do they have to be treated differently because uh, they have this handicap? Uh, you know, they're going to have to have a special license for a straw. I don't know what, you know what the consequence is. This is one of those places where it's a little bit ambiguous as to how either side is using this point. All right. Thank you.